الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, all praise is due to Allah, and as such, we should praise Him. We should seek His help and seek refuge in Allah from the evil which is within ourselves and the evil which results from our deeds. For whomsoever Allah has guided, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah has allowed to go astray, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger of Allah. Inna asdaq al-hadithi kitabullah wa khayra hadhi hadhi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra al-umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'a wa kulla bid'atin dalala wa kulla dalalatin fi nar Indeed, the most truthful form of speech is the book of Allah. And the best source of guidance is the guidance brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all affairs, the worst of all human affairs are the innovations in religion. For every innovation in religion is a source of misguidance. And all misguidance ultimately leads to the hellfire. Brothers and sisters, we are within range of a classical example of innovation in religion leading to misguidance. In six days time, much of the world will celebrate Christmas. A classical example of innovation leading to misguidance. Christmas, which even in this land Muslims are affected by, in ignorance, not knowing the significance of the rituals and the various components of Christmas, we even find Muslims adopting some of the symbols, greeting their workmates, their friends, their neighbors, Merry Christmas, feeling that since the workmates will tell us Happy Eid, Eid Mubarak, and they don't necessarily believe in our Eid. Why not also tell them Merry Christmas, even though we don't really believe in their Christmas? There are a number of issues that we need to understand concerning Christmas. Whereby, having understood them, it is possible for us to help guide our colleagues, our friends, our neighbors, our schoolmates, whatever, to the truth about Christmas. Most Christians don't really know the truth about Christmas. So, as we Muslims are enjoined to seek knowledge, as the Prophet ﷺ had said, طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيدَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ And we spoke about that in previous khutbas. And in fact, all of our various khutbas are expressions of seeking the knowledge, understanding the religion. Whereas other religions, people are discouraged from seeking knowledge. They are told that knowledge will confuse them. Satan will use this knowledge to weaken their faith. So better they just listen to the priest or the monk or the whatever and follow blindly, he will guide you down the correct path. 
But Islam says no. Each individual is responsible to know his or her religion as thoroughly as is possible. That is the responsibility of each and every individual. But of course, there are those who know more. So where do we seek knowledge of the religion? We don't seek it from our ignorant uh, compatriots, our ignorant colleagues who are in the same state of ignorance as we are, so it is the blind leading the blind. No, we do seek it from those who know. As Allah said, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask those who know if you don't know. Don't ask those who don't know like yourself. What do you think? No. We need to seek knowledge from the sources. From those who have access to the sources. So, considering Christmas, Christ Mass. Christmas, first and foremost, we should understand, was not a celebration taught by Prophet Jesus, nor was it done by his disciples, those who were around him, the twelve and others. They never celebrated it, and he didn't teach it. So in fact, it is not from the teachings of Jesus. In fact, even if you look in the books of the Christians today, in the Gospels, you will not find any mention of Christmas there. It was unknown, not celebrated. Even in spite of the innovations of Paul, because Christianity should more rightly be called Paulianity, not associated with Christ, but associated with Paul. Because he is the one who molded Christianity into what it is today. A different interpretation of what Jesus taught. An innovation, a series of innovations which he introduced. But in spite of that, Christmas was not among them. The Paulian innovations did not include Christmas. Christmas was not celebrated in the Christian world until more than 300 years after the time of Christ. Why? Why didn't they celebrate it? Because fundamentally it was known that the celebration of birthdays was a pagan custom. That's what we have to understand fundamentally. Why early Christianity did not celebrate birthdays? Because, of course, this has its own implication on us celebrating our children's birthdays. So, okay, we understand Christmas, but what about the kid's birthday? All his friends at school are celebrating their birthdays. He feels left out. The teacher, when he goes to school, they get the, the dates of birth of all the children and they identify whose birthday it is and they celebrate and everybody. But when it comes to my son or my daughter, theirs are not celebrated. They feel left out. Well, we have to say first and foremost, brother, you shouldn't have put your child in that school. So don't compound your error by now celebrating your child's birthday so that he will be happy. You have put him in that situation. Take him out. If you want to correct it, you take him out. Don't celebrate the birthday. You made a mistake. It's not too late. Recognize it for what it is and correct it. So early Christians didn't celebrate the birthday of anybody because the celebration of birthdays was known to be a pagan practice. If you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament, the only place that you find celebration of birthdays was the celebration of the birthdays of the pharaohs, the pagan rulers, Herod of Palestine, 
This is only associated with the pagans. It was known. It was based on the belief that the day on which one is born, one is weakest. This is the day when one is weakest and most easily affected by evil spirits. So they used to burn candles to drive away the evil spirits. Light in the darkness. The evil coming in the darkness, the light drives away the darkness. And that's why you see all of the celebrations has this principle of candles. Well now, it's Christmas tree lights. Those Christmas tree lights were originally candles which were placed on the Christmas tree. They became lights, modern technology. And sometimes the lights are even in the form of a little flame. Some of them will flicker like a flame and all these other kinds of things. Because that was the origin of the belief. So early Christians didn't celebrate it. 300 years after the time of Christ, a monk, it said, a Scythian monk, suggested that the date of birth of Jesus was the 25th of December. How did he come to the 25th of December? No evidence. In fact, historians looking at the historical record according to the Gospels concluded that it couldn't have been in winter. December was winter because of other issues that they talked about in the Gospels concerning the time and what was happening at that time. It wasn't winter time. At any rate, 25th of December was chosen. Chosen when Christianity now became strongest where? In Rome. It had left the Middle East. It had left Jerusalem. The teachings of Jesus were overwhelmed in Jerusalem. Paul in southern Turkey had become the leader of Christianity. He is the one who called the followers of Jesus Christians. He was the first one to use that name. It was never used before that. Jesus never used the term. It was a Paulian term, Christianity, Christians. And from there, it was taken to Rome, through Greece and on to Rome. And as it traveled through Greece and into Rome, it absorbed a variety of practices which were pagan in order to win over the hearts of the pagan Greeks and the pagan Romans. They adopted a variety of teachings. In Greece, they adopted the idea of the Son of God. The Son of God, the Logos. And in Rome, it was developed to the point where the day of worship shifted from the Sabbath, from Saturday to Sunday. Why? Because the most popular god of the Romans at that time was Apollo. Apollo, according to Roman mythology, was the sun god, S-U-N, God, who would drive his, or ride his chariot across the sky, carrying the sun behind him. Furthermore, he was also the son of Zeus, the son of the main god. So he was also the son of God, S-O-N, as well as being the sun god, S-U-N. And that's why the day for his popular worship was called Sunday. So when you say to somebody, I'll meet you on Sunday, you're saying, I'll meet you on the day that the, the God, the sun God is worshipped. So 
So, this change had taken place. And in this context, where so many pagan ideas were now being introduced, the 25th of December was pulled out of the hat. Why the 25th of December? Why not the, some other day? Well, if one goes back into the history of Christianity, into Christmas, you will find another term associated with Christmas is called the Saturnalia. The Saturnalia. What is the Saturnalia? Saturnalia was the day of worship dedicated to Saturn. Saturn? Isn't that a planet? Yes, there's a planet called Saturn. Named after the Roman god of the harvest, Saturn. He was the god of the harvest. So, when the fields were harvested, then rites of worship were dedicated to Saturn. That series of worship rites were called the Saturnalia. And it involved giving of gifts. It involved carrying wreaths, the holly, the little red uh, berries with a wreath of green leaves, which is commonly associated, you will see with images of Christmas, you will see this, and they even sing about it, deck the halls with boughs of holly, etc. The song they sing in those. It has to do this holly, this wreath, this was directly associated with the Saturnalia. And as time, as Christianity spread into Europe, it absorbed other symbols. In Scandinavia, the Scandinavians believed in tree gods, that the gods inhabited the trees. They were inside trees. So, if you wanted to talk to your god, you would go to the tree and knock on it, and then you would talk to God. Right? And this is where the practice we now call knock on wood comes from. When people say, things are going well, knock on wood, find me some wood to knock on, that's what it goes back to, the Scandinavian practice of knocking on the trees before talking to their gods. This is all pagan. At any rate, the Scandinavians, when they looked at the various trees, all the trees, when winter came, the fall came, they call it the fall, why? Because that's when the leaves of the trees would fall, fall off. As it started to get cold, the leaves turned in color and then they fell off. Except for one tree. The tree we now call the Christmas tree. This is the evergreen. It stays green all year long. So they felt it was the symbol of everlasting life. Because a God has got to be everlasting. He can't be dying. So they didn't choose the other trees. They chose this one, the one we now call the Christmas tree. And they brought small versions of it into their homes to worship. And this is where the Christmas tree came from. So, from a basic understanding of what is involved in the rites of Christmas, it is enough to say, as a Muslim, it is not permissible for us to celebrate this celebration in any way, shape, or form, with any of its symbols not acceptable. Furthermore, 
from a religious perspective, purely Tawheed, Aqeedah, monotheism, our fundamental belief concerning God being one and unique. One of his attributes is what? Having no beginning as well as having no end. He is without beginning. Lam yalid. He's not born. He doesn't give birth. Okay. Lam yalid. Walam yulad. Nor is he born. Neither does he give birth nor is he himself born. So, on one hand, he doesn't give birth, he can't have a son. Because once you say son, you're talking about a father and a son. And the father and the son are not the same. And if the father was a god, then the son has to be a god. So now you have two gods. All kinds of problems come up with that. Furthermore, nor was he born. God is not born. Because for one to be born, one had to first not exist. And if God didn't exist, how would he then come into existence? It's confusion. So one of the most essential characteristics of God is that he is without beginning, meaning he was never born, cannot be born. Somebody says to you, can't God do everything and anything? In Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, we say yes. Allah is able to do all things which are befitting with him being God. Not included in that are things which make him no longer God. We don't include that. That's understood. Those are absurdities. We don't include that in the general concept of Allah being able to do all things. So we don't go there. Couldn't God make himself born? No. So the idea that God was born on the 25th of December... Because according to Christian theology, Jesus is God. He is the Son of God, and at the same time, He is God. That is blasphemy. Allah speaks about it in the Quran, saying that the, 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 the heavens and the earth are about to be torn apart because of this statement of human beings. That God bore a son. That God was born. So when we celebrate Christmas, we're celebrating the day on which, according to Christians, God was born. Can a Muslim celebrate the day on which God was born? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we have to be very clear on this matter. That for a Muslim, celebration of Christmas is absolutely forbidden. However, as a Muslim, it is our duty to understand what Christmas is about, why Muslims don't celebrate it, and convey this information to our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors, etc., who are in ignorance. They don't know. And we try to do so in the best way that we can. We convey that information to them. After that, it is on them whether they accept and believe and, or not. This is up to them. But it is our duty to do so. And part of the celebration of Christmas is to say Merry Christmas. That is part of the rituals, the customs of Christmas. 
So don't say I'm not celebrating, meaning I didn't buy a tree. I don't subscribe to the lie of Santa Claus because Santa Claus is a national lie. Something which the whole nation agrees on. We're going to lie to our children and tell them this fat man in a red suit comes climbing down your chimney and putting gifts in your shoe, your sock on Christmas. It's a national lie. And people wonder why they have a nation of liars. Where the president lies, he gets caught in lies from time to time. And it's not a big deal. Oh, he shouldn't have lied. But they accept it. Why? Because you're taught to lie from the very beginning. You start by lying to the children. And eventually the child finds out. And you hear people talking about it. That traumatic morning. <laughs> when the child woke up early and came downstairs and saw mom and dad stuffing the <laughs> presents inside of the socks. Shocking. Bringing kids to tears. Traumatic. It's a big lie. So, besides that, because the fact that we don't actually engage in that practice, saying Merry Christmas in itself is a part of the rites of Christmas. So we're not even allowed to do that. To say Merry Christmas. Of course, we might find it difficult because our workmates, they come to us and say, Merry Christmas! Uh, what do I say now? <laughs> uh, I'm not supposed to say Merry Christmas back to them. What did I say? You know, Have a happy holiday. Who can tell them that? It's a holiday. Have a happy holiday. Find some other phrases to use which you feel comfortable with which don't include Merry Christmas. And those who say, well, they say Eid Mubarak. They just finished telling us Eid Mubarak for Eid al-Adha. Well, we say it's, there's a difference. There's a huge difference. Eid al-Adha is celebrating something that Christians believe in. Christians believe that Prophet Abraham was instructed to sacrifice his son and God replaced that sacrifice with a ram and he sacrificed it. So their saying Eid al-Adha in no way affects their belief system. In fact, they should feel proud to say Eid al-Adha. Whereas our saying Merry Christmas, that strikes at the very core of our belief system. Two different things altogether. Furthermore, if we actually get into the root of it, the celebration of Christmas is like the celebration of Satan's day. There are people who are called Satan worshippers. There's a church of Satan in America recognized by the government. There's a Satan's Bible. The whole system is there. You can go on the internet, Google, Satan's Bible, Satan worshippers, Wikipedia will give you their history. They are recognized. Now if one of those Satan worshippers said to you, Happy Satan's birthday, do you have any problems in not saying happy Satan's birthday to you also? Oh, you don't have any problem with that. That's obvious. Reality is that Christmas is 
a celebration of Satan's birthday. Because if it's not from God, then it is from Satan. As a general principle, whatever is worshipped besides God is Satan. It's satanic. Of course, when we're explaining to our Christian colleagues, we don't need to go there. Right? Because that's going to close ears. Nobody's going to hear you after that. Hey, you're celebrating Satan's birthday. Yeah. No. They're not going to be able to understand that. It's a bit deep, right? And this is just for your ears. For you to understand the roots of it. Why you shouldn't feel shy about not celebrating or saying Merry Christmas. Any more than you would feel, not feel shy about saying Merry Satan's birthday to a Satan worshiper. So, putting all this in context, I ask Allah SWT to give us the strength of faith to handle this period which is coming before us, to renew our faith in Allah and in His oneness, and to guide our colleagues and our friends and our neighbors to the truth about Allah. To remind them of Allah's oneness and about the fact that he had no son, he has no equal, and he wasn't born. And to affirm that faith ourselves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to fulfill whatever that requires of us in our lives. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَرِسَائِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ لِكُلِّ ذَمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ I say that asking Allah to forgive myself and yourselves and call on you to turn to Him seeking His forgiveness as none can forgive sins except Him. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Having understood Christmas, it is also important for us to understand the Islamic, or we shouldn't say Islamic, let us call it the Muslim substitute. Muslims, seeing this fervor with which Christians celebrated the day of birth of Jesus Christ, the supposed day, felt that since Muhammad وسلم, in our belief system, he was a greater prophet than Jesus, السلام, then shouldn't we celebrate his birthday? If the Christians are making such a big show, shouldn't we do more? Do better? So, 400 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Muslims began to celebrate the birthday of Prophet Muhammad. It began in Egypt as a national practice under the Fatimids, the Shiite rulers of Egypt. They started it. And the day they chose was actually the day historically on which Prophet Muhammad died. The day on which he was born is actually not known. Though people say, no, but we know it is. No. Historians are not agreed on the day. We have no concrete evidence regarding the day on which Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was born. The only concrete evidence we have is the practice of Prophet Muhammad to fast on Mondays 
and when he was asked about fasting on Mondays, one of the answers that he gave was it was the day on which I was born. He fasted on Mondays. So the only thing that we can say with certainty is that he was born on a Monday. Which Monday? Allah alone knows. As Allah hid the day on which Prophet Isa was born, He hid the day on which Prophet Muhammad was born. This was to prevent what has happened. To make it difficult to leave evidence to people that people have gone astray in this matter. That the celebration of the Prophet Sallallahu birthday has no basis in Islamic teachings beyond fasting on Monday. So, as Muslims, this innovation, which has become widespread, beginning from Fatimid uh, rulers in Egypt, spreading over the Ummah today, Till now you have huge celebrations, people going down the streets, lights, song, dance, you know, the whole nine yards, as they say, going on in the Muslim world today. Huge celebration, the Mawlid. People writing poetry, Qasidat al-Burda, and Qawali singing, and music, and everything, all the forbidden things have now been lumped together in the Mawlid. All innovation is misguidance. Kullu bid'atin dalala. That's what Prophet Muhammad said. Regardless of people's intention, people say, but that's not my intention. I don't intend to innovate, I'm just remembering Prophet Muhammad Is it a bad thing? In the way that you're doing it is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to remember Prophet Muhammad Allah tells us in the Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Calls on the believers to remember Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu by doing what? By celebrating his birthday? Some people say, yeah, that's what the verse is really saying. Celebrate his birthday. That is not what was understood by the early generation. The early generation that heard this verse that recorded this verse, they didn't celebrate his birthday. So obviously that was not what was to be understood from this verse. They understood, as the verse clearly states, that we ask Allah's peace and blessings to be on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu In our recognition for what he has done for us, guided us to the straight path, we ask Allah to bless him. Not to celebrate his birthday with the fanfare that we do today. It being innovation, it is not surprising that it caused deviation. So some of the poetry that is recited, Qasidat al-Burda, attributes to Prophet Muhammad Wasallam the knowledge of Allah. They give the attributes of Allah to Muhammad Wasallam in this poetry which they recite regularly, religiously, on his birthday and, and on other occasions. Innovation, misguidance. Calling people to the worship of Muhammad wasallam. And so we have Muslims today who call on Muhammad We see it in the masjids where they will put a plaque on one side of the mihrab saying, Ya Allah! And on the other side it will say, Ya Muhammad! What does that mean? Ya Allah! Ya Muhammad! We understand Ya Allah! Oh Allah! Answer my prayers! Ya Muhammad! Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yes! But Ya Muhammad! Oh Muhammad, what? 
We're calling on him to do something for us? People believe that today. And that is misguidance. That is shirk. Muhammad وسلم, can do nothing for us in this life. He did what he did. Each and every one of us who has accepted Islam, he is re rewarded for because we are a product of his work. So he benefits. But he cannot benefit us directly in that we can call on him and he will answer our prayers and do things for us. That is Allah. Allah said, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Call on me and I will answer your prayers. Only Allah can answer our prayers. And this is the true Islamic belief. And this is what we need to renew. Put these practices back in their correct context. No, renew our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A relationship of ibadah, of worship, in the purest way possible. This is Islam. Worshipping Allah as he deserves to be worshipped. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the blessing of worshipping him as he deserves to be worshipped. Ask Allah to remove from our hearts the innovations and the love of misguidance that has entered upon us. Ask Allah to guide our families, our children, our ummah to the true worship of Allah alone. And to bring everything else in submission to it. To return to this ummah its strength based on faith. To return to this ummah its ascendancy and guidance to the world based on faith. I ask Allah to forgive us, to forgive us our misguidings, our misguidance, our deviation, and to bring us back to the straight path, and to take us from this life, believers. Ameen. Akinu salah.